We are now going to uh, transition over to our next session for today. And I'm very pleased to uh, introduce Jonathan Albin. He's the owner of Activate, and he will be discussing enterprise technology solutions. Uh, he, was, he joined us on a recent cannabis dispensary webinar, and we're very excited to have him back for the Ask the Experts virtual conference today. Uh, so with that, Jonathan, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, so again, thank you everybody for joining. So a couple of things that we do want to talk about or that I want to talk about today are definitely enterprise-grade technology solutions. Um, and what we mean by that when we talk about enterprise-grade solutions are things that are not small office, home office. So our team has been doing a lot of research within uh, the cannabis industry for many years before we started kind of kicking the door in on this industry specifically. Um, and what our technology experts have identified is that a lot of dispensaries and a lot of grows are using the traditional small office, home office type of equipment that is found that, you know, your typical local Best Buy, so to speak. And so what we want to do is promote moving to enterprise grade solutions that are used throughout uh, most enterprises, most larger size, mid to large scale businesses. Uh, throughout the world. So a few things that we have identified is that um, we seem to have not only three different customer types that we see uh, proliferate throughout the cannabis industry, but also three types of retail locations. And they really, um, they really kind of speak to one another almost, uh, almost anonymously. So when we look at the first customer type, the impartial, it's the type of customer that's looking for convenience. It's the, you know, they see the dispensary or the location, you know, kind of on their way to and from work or in their daily lives. And then we look at a customer type two, which is the moderate that we've identified. <clears throat> and they will provide mixed customer satisfaction ratings. Their social media engagement is typically less than 50%. And they're not really willing to travel more than 35% to your specific uh, retail location. And then what we want to do is leverage this technology that we're going to be talking about over the next few minutes to really ingrain and create and develop what we've identified as the type three customer, the diehard that goes right in line with uh, the type three retail location. Because what you can do is you can leverage as a business owner technology to get that kind of uh, customer satisfaction rating, that willingness to travel, and that social media engagement based on the kind of experience, the customer experience that you're providing at your location. And so how is this done? Well, this is really done through a couple of different things. Now, first and foremost, what we talk to everybody about is uh, securing the basics. So right out of the box, making sure that the wired and wireless infrastructure is available. Um, people still, customers still use in-store Wi-Fi to look at uh, comparable pricing and comparable products as they're shopping in their day-to-day -day lives. And at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're providing a retail experience from a dispensary perspective. And if you think about not just the dispensary experience, but if you think about your day-to-day -day and you know pre-COVID-19, you know, when you went to a store, what was that retail experience like? And how demanding are customers nowadays, um, at least in the past five years, which has driven a lot of retail uh, retailers uh, to essentially go out of business because they have not provided that proper, that appropriate customer experience. So think about one example that I like to talk about is think about walking into a big box store like a Macy's or a Nordstrom or a Bloomingdale's or uh, whatever the case is. If you're walking in and you're looking for a shirt and they don't have the shirt that you like in your size and you can't get, and, and they think that you have, or that they have that size available for you, but they can't get that product to you, you're very likely to walk out. And it's not the way it used to be 20 years ago where you would stand and wait in the store for 35, 45 minutes until they check inventory. Nowadays, customers don't have the patience for that. And that translates into every aspect of retail. And so what we start to talk about is we start to talk about omni-channel presence in these conversations and making sure that you can make the sale through multiple channels. Um, and what are multiple channels? There's social media, it's website, it's calling into a call center, it's online ordering, and naturally there's the brick and mortar walking into a physical location. But how does a company execute on getting you that shirt in your size when you're looking for that specific style? Now, some retailers have been able to adapt and leverage technology like RFID um, and much more uh, advanced inventory management and enterprise resource planning softwares 
uh, software um, to make sure that if that shirt in your style that you want and your size is not available in your specific location that you're at right now, maybe they'll ship it to you from another location across the country. Maybe they're going to be able to ship it to you from a warehouse. But if they can't get their act together and provide you the information to make that sale on the spot, every retail customer will walk out of the door, will not look back, will go look for a different shirt, a different style in another store. Um, so being able to transact on the spot is all a part of that omni-channel experience. So the first thing, like I mentioned before, is you need that infrastructure. So you got to make sure that the wired and wireless network are performing at optimum, uh, optimal capability. Um, and this then leads to the ability to start doing really, really slick things like the team prior to me was talking about with kiosk systems. It, le it leads retailers to have the capability of deploying wireless devices, wireless tablets with credit card readers and doing all of this really awesome stuff to, to further enhance the customer experience that eliminates paper costs. So it increases sustainability. It gives the ability to provide uh, what's known as line busting. So if anybody remembers ever going out around Christmas time, uh, shopping into a large store or into a mall when the lines are really long, and sometimes uh, um, an employee can come out from the stock room with a mobile device and start transacting for you, taking credit card payment and letting you walk out the door, that's line busting. Apple does a phenomenal job with that in stores where you don't even realize that they're doing line busting, but they're doing it and they're spreading it out across the floor, the retail floor, so there's not a lot of people queued up, so to speak, in line waiting to pay for product. They make it so smooth that you don't even realize what's going on. But if you spend it, if you had ever spent any amount of time in, in an Apple store or do that when they go back to full operation, it's a really slick thing to do because they do it very well. And it's very easy to transition those types of things, that kind of omni-channel presence and that fluidity within your business to this specific space and that's what we're here to evangelize and make sure that your teams are capable of doing that your business is able to provide that faster check in time being able to do two-way video for shared assistance using those kiosks and those tablets and those other devices so that you don't need to have you know 18 bud tenders on the sales floor you can now have four or five or two or three and do the rest digitally with a remote uh, team somewhere not physically in front of the customer there specifically. Um, having the capability to leverage rewards programs so that as customers are walking into a location, they're getting an enhanced customer experience so they're able to see uh, more options and more product that they would not have been exposed to if these systems were not in place. And what we really want to do is get beyond just that basic uh, step. Now, uh, at the top of the screen, we've got uh, a solution from Zebra presented here uh, that's called Smart Lens. And this solution has actually been rolled out to Walgreens locations. So if there's a Walgreens location near you, you can go out there and see the hardware implemented and in place. I believe it's a little over 375 locations that have it currently in place across the country. And so what we're doing really is we're bringing all of these technologies, all of these solutions that have been helping healthcare, pharmaceutical industry, and larger industries um, and make them available to the cannabis industry specifically. Now, what's really interesting about this smart lens uh, system is that it, it does a variety of things. So it makes it a lot easier to do order fulfillment, it keeps track of supply chain. So as products are being purchased, nobody has to really interact with the products and physically go out there and scan every individual item. It's leveraging RFID, it's leveraging cameras, it's got backend analytics engines that are all working on mobile computers that the workforce is using, that ties into their point of sale, that ties into their order management systems, their warehouse management systems, and automatically as product moves from a vehicle, a truck into the warehouse, into the retail space and walks out the door in the hands or bags of customers, all of these systems are monitoring that. And what Walgreens specifically has seen is they've seen it's almost a 30, 35% decrease in loss or shrink, which is essentially theft or items that develop 
legs on their own and walk out the door. Now, whether that's employee driven or it's, you know, customer driven, that customers are trying to steal uh, product and inventory, it doesn't matter because now leveraging RFID, uh, this system is constantly aware of where the products are. And if the products go to a place that they shouldn't within the store itself, the retail location itself, everyone becomes aware of where that product is. And now employees can go and pull product and merchandise from shelves uh, where they don't belong to shelves where they do belong. And it's very easy to track inventory um, across every corner of the facility. And what does that do? That further enhances the in-store experience. That improves that operational excellence and it elevates brand awareness. So it helps protect the brand and it keeps things running real, real smooth. And that's, you know, that's to, you know, keep talking or keep uh, moving on to uh, that omni-channel presence that I was talking about before. So creating that diehard and having some, uh, some entrenchment into your business. So from a seed to store perspective, when you start leveraging uh, some of these advanced solutions and these uh, systems that are available from a couple of different manufacturers, Zebra, uh, Zebra Technologies is one of the premier uh, manufacturers and vendors within this space, what we can do is we can start implementing solutions from grow all the way through the retail. So seed to store is exactly what we're talking about so that we can create the highest level co uh, customer satisfaction rating possible and make sure that there's more engagement over time and really get diehards, uh, diehard fans, diehard customers that are going to be out there talking about your specific brand, talking about your specific retail experience over not just your competition, but competition from across the country. Um, folks are, you know, or at least were traveling a lot up until the pandemic hit. And what we can do is leverage these solutions to do that specifically. Um, everything from uh, tracking products as they go from warehouses or third-party suppliers. I mean, it's a full, uh, full visibility into the entire supply chain to make sure that at every point, the products are being tracked so automatically when, for example, a product is low, orders are being placed without any human intervention if you want it to be, or it can go to approval of specific directors or order managers that you have in your existing supply chain. So we kind of talked about this um, just a moment ago as well, but really what I want to focus on here are those deep insights because you know, we are at a point in uh, history where analytics makes such a massive difference in everything that we do and it can really transform a business and its operations um, and by streamlining that operational efficiency and by streamlining all of these data points crunching the numbers behind the scenes using machine learning um, and AI is really huge um, and it can it can transform a business and make it significantly more profitable and what we want to do is we want to demonstrate the types of software, the types of utilities, the tools, how to implement them, and how to take that next step from what we were talking about a few minutes ago to this next um, stage in your business. And so why does this matter? Well, not just because uh, it's going to make you more operational efficiency, not because it's going to make you more profitable, but it's going to keep at bay the real competition. and Today, a lot of folks are very aware that the real competition is big pharma, big tobacco. So Altria, for example, that's uh, depicted in this Who We Are screenshot that we took off of Altria's website, that's what we see at the top left in that larger, that's a tobacco grow. It looks exactly like a hybrid grow that you, know, you folks in your industry uh, have in place. Well, companies like Altria already have these grow operations ready, willing, and capable of turning on, lighting that up, um, no pun intended, so that once federal regulatory status changes for cannabis, they can go ahead and move in. They've already made significant investments um, within the cannabis industry because they want to make sure that they can corner the market on marijuana, cannabis, the way they have with tobacco. And there's a couple of links there that you can uh, screenshot or go to. Um, and we'll send follow-ups to everybody on uh, on the webinar here as well. Um, but there are so many instances where uh, Big Tobacco and Big Pharma have made significant investments into the cannabis industry because they want to corner the market. 
And what you really have to think about is, you know, look at how simple it is to buy a pack of cigarettes at any convenience store and gas station across the planet. Nobody knows distribution channels and channel uh, processes the way big tobacco and pharmaceutical does. Um, there's a reason why big pharma can make a 200, 300 and something percent profit off of a generic pill that you pick up at your local Walgreens or your local CVS. It's because they know how to streamline every aspect of their operation from ordering new pill bottles and sourcing to labels and how it's being transported. They know every aspect and they automate as much as possible within their supply chain so that they keep that profitability up. And what we want to do is, again, evangelize and show the cannabis industry specifically how you can poise yourself to avoid this from becoming a significantly larger issue than it is today and really make sure that that customer experience is first and foremost because the one thing that big tobacco cannot do is provide that kind of experience that some dispensaries are capable and are currently doing today by having that person there available to talk to them it's like it's it's an enhanced version of the you know 1940s uh, local pharmacist um, and we can do that through technology and show everybody how to do that really well. Um, so this slide just talks a little bit about some of our certifications. So we have people within our organization that are uh, highly certified, highly capable technology solutions providers, and they have been for 20, 30 plus years. And that's kind of all I had on my end here. Um, if there are any questions, I'm open to taking some questions. Jonathan, thank you. Yes, that was fantastic. And uh, we do have a couple questions coming in here. Um, I wanted to sort of just begin with a question about the onboarding process. And um, when you begin working with, uh, with a retailer, what that onboarding process looks like and what those uh, initial steps might be. Excellent question. Thank you. So what that really looks like is, you know, we are a technology solutions provider. Um, and what we do is we take the best of commercial off-the-shelf solutions, products, hardware, software, and then we wrap our services around that. So we are really a managed services provider. So what the onboarding would look like would be a real detailed look into things like, what does your internet connection look like at your establishment? What does your phone solution look like at your establishment? What are you doing from a unified communications or a voice and video perspective currently? What's your vision look like for the next two years? What does it look like for the next five years? And then by understanding where uh, a business is at today with the types of computers they have, what kind of point of sale system they have, are they thinking about going to really slick kiosks like the team before me speaking uh, was illustrating? That is really super slick stuff. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that the infrastructure is there, that the vision is there combined, and we can holistically work together with your executive team um, and your business and our executive team to make that planning and set out that roadmap and make sure that everything is aligned because there are so many capabilities that we can provide from a technology perspective, but we need to know what it is that your next business goals will be. Do you want to open up more locations in several states? Or are you looking to go international? You know, all of those questions. So part of that onboarding process is giving us the ability to see where you are at today so that we can replace and enhance where we can and help make sure that everything is baseline. You have a sound foundation of a wired and wireless network so that you can take that next step and really open up that customer experience. Excellent. Uh, you know, as the, as the event has gone on here, we've talked quite a bit about ROI and uh, upselling and, and different techniques that, that might help uh, increasing sales. Um, so could you, could, could you sort of uh, provide examples of, of where uh, those increased sales might be coming from and, or what, uh, what other industries are, are doing really well to capitalize on that, that that we can learn from in cannabis? For sure. So re retail, first and foremost, um, has, has had an interesting evolution in the past 15 years. I mean, everybody here has seen uh, large retailers like Zara, Forever 21, Toys R Us is a great example. Uh, Toys R Us went out of business. They filed for Chapter 11 a couple of years ago, but they've just made a re-entry 
into a small section of Target retail stores. They had tried going to Amazon for a while. Um, but why did they have to do that? Well, anybody that had ever gone to a Toys R Us store, I mean, even when they started putting kiosks so that you can check prices on toys so that they could alleviate the overhead on employees and cut back on their workforce, that still wasn't enough. Why wasn't it enough? Because they had not implemented a proper inventory management system. They had not tied in online presence. They never thought about selling uh, toys online for, my gosh, it was like 30 something years before they finally decided to put something on a website that you could purchase. And then order fulfillment became very difficult. So all of those poor customer satisfaction ratings and reviews began to become prolific. And everybody started to realize, you know what? Now Amazon is here. Now Walmart's going to online. It's a lot easier for me to buy, look for that same, you know, toy or bike or trike or even rollerblades that they were selling and Lego sets and such. They could buy that stuff someplace else way easier. And what Toys R Us ended up being was a place where you can go touch, feel, see the size of the box, plan ahead. But then people were still walking out of those stores. I'm guilty of this too. I used to just go to the store to see what it would look like. And then I'd go back online and purchase it because, you know, either the box was crunched up or, you know, I needed two of something for, you know, Christmas season or three of something and they only had one. And it just made more sense for me as a consumer to go home and purchase online. Perfect, John. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Cassie Knighton here uh, tuning in quickly um, because Eric had lost connection. He's rejoining us now. Um, I can ask. The, uh, no, it's no problem. I can ask the next question, though, um, which is regarding omni-channel. So if you can just dive into that topic a little bit more and why is omni-channel specifically important to retailers? So omni-channel is really important to retailers. I would say it's extremely critical. Um, like I mentioned before, um, a few minutes ago, when a customer has a bad experience at a retail location, meaning they can't get the product that they want, um, or the retailer thinks they can fulfill the order, but the order gets botched. I, I've had that experience, and a lot of folks have had that experience where they just can't get what they want. Um, that's huge. And so what Omnichannel really is, is tying in analytics, tying in all of the warehouse management systems, all of the inventory management systems to know exactly where within a company's physical space, whether it's in a warehouse, whether it's on the back of a semi truck, whether it's in a retail location on a shelf that it shouldn't be at, maybe it, you know, it's a shirt in the women's section and it should have been in the men's section. Um, Maybe it's curled up on the floor behind something. So by using things like RFID technologies like RFID, you can track exactly where inside of any physical space a specific product is. And so it's not just one channel being in store, another channel being online, another channel being web orders, another channel being promotions and sales. I mean, I've seen dispensaries move to selling product or pre-purchasing product via social media, via Instagram, that's another channel, but it is a highly evolving, rapidly changing and very critical channel that needs to be addressed. Not every dispensary out there is doing that. The folks that are doing it, some of them are doing really well with it. Some of them are having some challenges in the order fulfillment. Our deliveries are ending up where they're not supposed to be. And the reason why that happens is because those folks have not looked at it from an omni-channel perspective. It's multiple channels. It's being able to fulfill the orders no matter how those orders come in because at the end of the day, what you want to do is capitalize on a sale and not just capitalize on that sale, but also offer the upsell, which has been an ongoing trend for today. It's all about that upsell. So if a customer you know, likes a specific strain, and there's another product within that retailer's domain that has something that's, you know, maybe relevant in terms of, you know, the end user experience, uh, whether that's medicinally or from an adult use perspective, you know, offering those other products and making those products available and knowing when they're available, you know, being able to capture that sale as a customer walks in the door because the Bluetooth on that 
customer's smartphone is talking to the access points at the retail location. So even from the parking lot, you know, for example, Johnny Smith has arrived and they've already pre-ordered these products and it's a curbside pickup. All of that stuff's coming out to them so that it makes it more fluid. It's enhancing that customer experience. It's enhancing that brand recognition. And it's a win-win for everyone. But more importantly, it's a much more profitable thing for um, that retailer. Excellent. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. I'm uh, returning real quick. Uh, we have another question here relating to um, uh, data tracking, basically. And I know you've used uh, the example several times of, uh, of customers walking into a store and, and looking for a, a shirt. Uh, and in a lot of cases, uh, those clothing retailers may already know what that customer is looking for based on past purchases. So could you talk a bit about how uh, that sort of customer data tracking might be uh, best used in, in the cannabis environment? Yeah, sure. So you know, creating, having, whether you have a reward system in place or you need to create a reward system, again, looking at it from what I mentioned before, looking at it from an omni-channel perspective, making sure that that customer's profile, that user's profile is filled in with all of the products that they've been purchasing, trends begin to emerge. And that's where leveraging machine learning um, and AI comes into place on figuring out what other products that specific customer may be interested in based on their purchasing habits. Now, what I would love to see someday, and this is going to take, I mean, a lot of integration effort, but just imagine a point in time years from now where, let's say I myself as a consumer love blueberry, and that's a strain that I have wanted to get and I always have love, but I haven't been able to find it. At some point, it is, I mean, and it's possible today, but the technology systems are not rolled out and they're not implemented because folks, I don't think, have been made aware of it. But just imagine if I, as a consumer, love Blueberry, haven't had it in forever. I go to, let's say, Colorado. I travel a lot, and so does my team. But let's say I go to Colorado, I go to Denver, and I want to get some Blueberry. At some point, it can be possible for retailers based on my profile that exists are sharing my profile information so I can I can know that a specific grow is going to have blueberry available at specific retail locations so I can plan my trip not just based on hotels that I like but dispensaries that I want to be close to so that they have that strain available for me. I mean it, it sounds almost far-fetched but it's very possible today that's very possible, but it's not being done by anybody because the kinds of solutions that we're talking about implementing have not been adopted by the cannabis industry. And that's what we want to do is show everybody how that kind of stuff can be possible. Excellent. Well, you paint a very nice picture there, and I think your presentation uh, was fantastic. I know we, we definitely learned a lot there. Uh, so Jonathan and, uh, and to the rest of the Activate team, just want to thank you for that presentation and thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. Most definitely. You too. Uh, now going to kick things over to our conference programming director, Kathy Niden. Hello again, everybody. And, and John, thanks so much for the great presentation. 